Hi, this is Mark Locks, Extension Weed Scientist at The Ohio State University. Uh, this video covers some of the things you might want to think about if you've had some issues with uh, wet weather and variable weather in the spring and trying to get things planted and get your weed control and your herbicides implemented at the same time. We're uh, generally in a pattern of having kind of wild or more variable weather which can cause some problems with that. This is actually, uh, this was presented as part of an OSU Precision U the Precision U series a couple weeks ago, um, and I'm just presenting it here separately. Um, some of the issues you get into when you have a wet spring um, is how to manage the burn down situation and keep it from getting out of hand and managing effectiveness. Um, what to do if you can't get any uh, herbicides applied, the crops emerge, you know, what about residual herbicides? What are my other options? If I, you know, I once it turns dry enough, I'm just in a rush to plant and I can't implement my weed control and some thoughts about uh, traits that you can use to maintain flexibility there. I really can't emphasize the importance of fall herbicide treatments enough to prevent a nasty burn down situation in the spring. Don't have to spend a lot of money. They work. Um, you know, six dollars worth of herbicide will do it in some cases and what it tends to do, even a treatment um, that doesn't provide any residual will keep the field essentially clean well into April usually and finally you'll, I mean, you'll have some giant ragweed coming up late March into April and then you'll start to see your summer annuals come up late April into May, but really uh, prevents the type of thing that you see on the right here, which is, uh, this is a May 2nd photo, and you can see in a situation where you get wet and delayed, you know, that's just going to turn into a big mess. It's going to cause problems with planting, harboring insects. It's going to be a lot tougher to kill uh, when you can finally get in there. So that's sort of your number one strategy, just to um, take care of some of your kiwis like dandelion and mare's tail, and also, you know, prevent some of these issues with nasty burn down in the spring. Um, you do have some things you can do in early spring. So if you hit a year when it's, um, you know, you have relatively decent conditions late March into the first part of April and you're looking at a forecast that possibly doesn't look good for later in spring when it's going to turn wet, um, you know, you can look at what you can accomplish at that time of the year. You know, you can put burn down and residual herbicides on earlier when you have some field conditions at work. It's not necessarily ideal. We have cold nights then the burn down herbicides don't work as well. You're putting a residual on pretty early, so kind of well ahead of when you may need it actually in, in May and June. But um, we've done a lot of split applications where you do some burn down and residual early at that time and then come back when you can finally plant. So the, you know, um, it's a situation where if you can get something on there again to try to prevent that weedy mess later in spring and get you started, gives you some flexibility to come back and finish it off later with some other uh, type of herbicide applications. I suppose it's possible if you get some drier conditions early spring, you can go ahead and do some tillage take care of some of the weeds that you might have come up at that time. Uh, for the truly nasty burn down situations, if you don't do anything and it gets late and it's just nasty, we just really advocate putting more burn down herbicides in there at increasing rates. So um, increasing your glyphosate rate goes a long way to a lot of weeds there that aren't glyphosate, the ones that aren't glyphosate resistant. You can add sharpen, you can add glufosinate, um, you know, you have the option to do some other things. Um, you can add 2,4-D depending. Um, if it's a non-enlist bean, you can try to go with a 2,4-D treatment if you can still wait to plant the beans. Possibly you can plant the corn, put the herbicide on and uh, the bean ground and come back and plant the bean, you know, the beans later. Um, if you can't wait to, wait to plant, you don't have one of the new traits um, where you can use dicamba or 2,4-D. You have the option to glufosinate, glyphosate, and sharpen, and metribucin can help that out. Um, Gramoxone 240 metribuzin can be an option, but you will re typically reach a size limit with this, especially on some of the uh, tougher weeds like mare's tail. Um, you know, your trait technology can help you out. Um, not much in Roundup Ready or non GMO. In, um, you can use glufosinate as a burn down treatment in any type of bean, so you can add it to a, a burn down program. Um, if you add metribuzin at the same time, again, it, it helps that out. If you go to the Liberty Link GT27 and the beans come up, then you would have the option of glyphosate and glufosinate, although there's a antagonism on a few weeds with that combination. And then, you know, the extent of the enlist bean can have a lot of value in the situation, the ability to use dicamba, uh, regardless of, you know, what the stage of the bean is and the extent and, and also the enlist, um, the option, that option with 2,4-D. Um, this doesn't necessarily solve your issues with a big burn down situation. And one of the problems in the with the current extend labels is that the Ingenia and the uh, extended flex, you're limited to that low rate. Um, it used to be the double rate you could apply in a nasty burn down situation. You're limited to the lowest rate on the label, although you can do it multiple uh, times. Um, and again, in the list system, you have the option of mixing three different things together, regardless of what the bean's doing, and 
you know, bumping your 240 rate using the higher rate of those 240 choline products. Um, if you look at what happens if you can't get anything on and what some of your options are, I'm just going to show you something, some data from a 2013 study from Missouri on water, which I think illustrates this pretty well. So on, um, if you haven't done anything, you could still, uh, you still have a couple options. We generally advocate getting a residual herbicide out uh, which has to go out before the soybeans emerge and then coming back with a post-emergence, um, a broad spectrum post-emergence on a weed like water hemp. And you can see if you do that here, you're at 99% control with a residual followed by glufosinate plus uh, 2,4-D regardless of the 2,4-D rate. You can do that with glufosinate, you lose a little bit of control. Um, now in a system where you can't um, be out there with a residual prior to planting and the beans have come up, um, and, you, and I'm using the Enlist system as a an example here, but you could substitute dicamba in some of these cases for the 2,4-D. You can go to something, you can go to a split post application. The, the goal here is um, knowing that you don't have a residual and you have weeds coming through early, that first post application should go on relatively early. And in this case, they used glufosinate with 2,4-D and came back with either glufosinate or glufosinate with 2,4-D, which you could do depending on, you know, the bean stage. And that's a good approach that would work for most of the summer annual weeds that we uh, work with. You can see the value there of having the 2,4-D with the glufosinate in the first post application because if you go up to the, the line, the next line up, it's the glufosinate followed by glufosinate, just not as good. And we would see that probably struggle uh, on a few weeds in that in that system. And then your other option is um, to come in with something strong to knock down what's there earlier than normal, again, because you don't have a residual of planting, and then adding a residual to that to try to get uh, enough control to carry you, and that would be tough on, on probably for us, that would be tough on mare's tail and giant ragweed and also water hemp. You can see here that worked better for prefix than it did for acetochlor. Um, we do have soybean residuals that can be applied after emergence. Um, the question here is whether they give, can give you residual control on key weeds, but all the group 15 herbicides, the acetamides, the acetochlor, thymethenamide, pyroxysulfone, metallochlor, you have some products that mix acetochlor or metallochlor with uh, femesifen, which also um, femesifen does have some residual control on broadleaf weeds. You have some relatively broad spectrum products, clarion salam, which is first rate, and mazethapir, which is pursuit, and then scepter. The problem is they're ALS inhibitors, and so they don't give us any residual control on water hemp, mare's tail, or uh, giant ragweed. So, and, and again, if you look at the ratings here, um, you can get some help on water hemp from a number of these. Uh, primarily with the acetamides, and you can get some help on common ragweed, depending on whether it's ALS resistant. Not as much on giant ragweed, although you can get some help from amazoquin or mesethapure. No help on mare's tail, and then you can help get help with grass and lambs quarter. So, you know, at that point, whether you go with a split post approach um, without residual or go ahead and throw residual in the in the first post emergence application is sort of a judgment call. Essentially, all your corn residuals can be applied after crop emergence. You know, all your atrazine premixes, all your Lexar-type materials, or Resicor, or Corvus, depending on corn size, um, and they have, uh, all those have some ability to knock down weeds that are out there. Um, you can add glyphosate, dicamba, other herbicides as needed. You do need to check label once you're in a post-emergence situation on what you can mix with it and what the adjuvants are, are that you can use. And keep in mind the competition with corn uh, and a total post-emergence system makes us nervous. So you want the weeds controlled well before they're two to four inches tall, especially heavy grass. Um, and if the weeds get a head start and you're coming in with something that's going to knock them down, you know, keep that in mind that you don't really want to delay that first post. Um, and again, if the residual doesn't hold on these, you would have the option to come back later with another post-emergence application. And that's where our information can be found and my contact information.